Welcome to the interesting flow, Bottle Island, an island which has been made from plastic bottles. How? Let's find out. Plastic garbage has accumulated in our environment over the course of several decades, with only 9% of that debris getting recycled. According to industry experts, it will need significantly greater reuse and recycling of waste than we presently do in order to combat pollution and avert a global disaster if we are to achieve our objectives and avoid a global catastrophe. Richard Soa, a British artist who lives in the United Kingdom, has inspired people all over the world by transforming 100,000 plastic bottles into a stunning floating island. He has since gone on to receive recognition for his efforts, many bizarre and ambitious ideas. After realizing that long-lasting plastic bottles may be used as a beneficial construction material, artist Richard Soa came up with the concept for the Floating Island Project. Because a plastic bottle can decompose over an extended period of time, 450 years, it is not just a hazardous waste for the environment, but it is also an incredibly long-lasting building material. According to Richard Soa, a native of England, utilizing plastic bottles and other ways to construct islands and increase land territories is the best course of action for humanity. The utilization of items that would otherwise end up in the trash, with no hope of ever being recycled, could result in the creation of a valuable resource. All of the stuff that we don't want, all of the garbage that we don't really know what to do with, says Richard, could be put to good use to alleviate world worries. Approximately 100,000 plastic bottles were used in the construction of Joixi Island, which is located near to the Mexican island of Isla Muvers. Additional materials, such as plywood and wooden pallets, were also used, all of which contribute to the island's ability to keep afloat. The island's core is made up of plastic bottles that have been placed inside nets, and the only thing that holds it all together are the trees that have grown between the bottles and spread their roots between them. Everything on Richard's Island is made from recycled materials, and he makes use of a variety of waste materials to make improvements to his construction project. His method of raising the island involves stuffing plastic and glass bottles, tin cans, and other rubbish into the bags, which he then uses to elevate the island off the ground. In order for plants to be able to grow on the island, he spreads the rubbish bags throughout the area and covers them with a layer of soil. One of the most striking parts of Richard's floating island is that it can be relocated to any other area with the use of sails or a boat, which is one of the island's most impressive features. Additionally, the island boasts a high level of self-sufficiency. It is possible to grow your own produce on the land, such as fruits, vegetables, and herbs, and the house is outfitted with solar-powered appliances, such as an air conditioning system, refrigerator, and other household appliances. Throughout this movie, Richard takes viewers on a guided tour of his beautiful island and cozy, eco-friendly home, once again sending a message to humanity. We must stop destroying the environment before it is too late. Even though Richard has witnessed the island suffer as a result of hurricanes on numerous occasions, he is determined to see it through again. Joixi Island is the first of two islands that Richard has built, the other being Joixi Island, Spiral Island which he built in 1998 and was destroyed by Hurricane Emily in 2005, was one of his most notable accomplishments. Naturally occurring disasters have completely demolished all of his subsequent floating islands. Joixi Island was the result of several years of collecting empty plastic bottles by Richard for his next piece. Richard Soa is determined to see his project through to completion. Whatever the obstacle, it is his intention to complete the repairs to the edges this year and reopen his island to the public in a more revitalized and improved shape. An environmental organization has also encouraged the artist to construct three additional floating islands, which means that in the not-too-distant future, we may witness even more paradise islands constructed entirely of bottles that would otherwise end up in the trash due to their environmental impact. Another piece of writing stated that the process of constructing this island had been a lengthy one. From its humble beginnings as a precarious raft covered in lush vegetation, Joyce has grown into a large building that allows Soa to live a nearly totally self-sufficient existence on her own terms. The three-story, two-bedroom home with a hot tub despite its modest exterior, is anything but. 
There is also a rainwater collection system, showers, and a fully functional bathroom on the premises, as well as a dry compost toilet. Joyce C is a place where mangroves are the glue that keeps everything together, yet they are not the only type of plant found on the island. To make a living, Soa takes care of gardens, where he grows his own vegetables, such as tomatoes and spinach, which he then sells. He also has a large number of fruit trees on his property. An island made of plastic bottles has formed on the ocean's surface several times. Soa has attempted to construct a plastic bottle island in the past, and Joyce T is not her first attempt at it. His first effort was made on Mexico's west coast several years ago, and he was successful. Unfortunately, the people of a nearby beach area complained to his little shack, which was perched atop a pile of empty plastic bottles. He was forced to relocate. After a short period of time, he was ordered to leave by the local police department. After completing Spiral Island, which was located off the coast of Mexico's Caribbean coast, Soa moved on to a more sophisticated project in the late 1990s, which he titled Spiral. Instead of using concrete, he used plastic bottles as a foundation and wooden mangrove roots as structural support this time. There were mangrove trees on this island that grew to heights of more than 25 feet and was erected on top of a foundation made of 250,000 plastic bottles. When Hurricane Emily wreaked havoc on the Dominican Republic in 2005, Spiral was unable to keep up with the storm. Workers constructing a condominium development in the vicinity of the island's disaster contributed to the cleanup effort. Some of the bottle-filled nets were discovered to have been saved, and these were returned to Soa after they were discovered. A group of local environmentalists assisted him in starting his eco-island firm, Joysty, with the goal of spreading his eco-island principles throughout the region. In response to the gathering of extra bottles, the construction of Soa's new island took place between 2007 and 2008. To avoid Joyce Steve from succumbing to the same fate as Spiral Island, he decided to enclose it in a lagoon on Isla Muvers and bury it beneath the surface of the water. Is there a more comprehensive picture? While the island has gained widespread media attention, including coverage on Ripley's Believe It or Not and the Travel and Discovery channels, Soa's remarks on his website imply that he feels his island creations might be the beginning of something far larger than he has yet imagined. By utilizing renewable energy sources such as wind, solar, and wave energy, the island serves as a model for environmentally friendly living. Wave-powered air conditioners, water pumps, and electrical chargers are just a few of the technologies that SOA claims to be working on improving upon. In addition, mangroves have the potential to filter the air by absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. In his islands, So believes that even if a few bottles puncture or leak, the entire structure will not be affected because of the sheer number of bottles there. The author goes on to suggest, among other things, that floating islands are an excellent alternative for disaster assistance since they are not affected by rising sea levels, flooding, or other natural disasters. According to his website, So welcomes visitors to Joystee and also offers guided tours of the facility. In order to participate in the trips, which include a return ride to the shore, he requests a donation of $5 or more per person. He also offers volunteers the opportunity to stay in his guest room at no cost or for a $20 fee, if they so desire, with breakfast included. Consider Richard's concept to repurpose waste bottles as building materials. What do you think of it? Do you agree with what he's saying? What are your thoughts? What if you had the opportunity to live on a tropical island of your own? Thanks for watching.